Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from Singapore International Photography Festival. Welcome to the festival online programs to connect you and everyone in the community despite close borders and stay home notice. My name is Gwen Lee, the director of Singapore International Photography Festival. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Liu Ying, and to facilitate this conversation. Before that, a short introduction on the festival for those who are new to SIPF in short. The Singapore International Photography Festival founded in 2008, a Binale gathering of minds from around the world with a common pursuit of advancing the arts and appreciation of photography. It aims to be a much needed arena for critical thoughts and academic discussion of photography in this part of Asia. SIPF also functioned as a key platform to discover and to nurture peoples in this engagement program, in all our engagement program. At the core of SIPF is a firm belief that photography can be enjoyed by all. SIPF is organized by DEC, a photography gallery and a recipient of National Arts Council major company grant. And sitting beside me, literally beside me, we are now actually located at, uh, at the current sites of the exhibition, It Can Be Better. And um, Liu Ying is actually just not too far from me. <laughs> yeah, well, just a short introduction. Liu Ying is a Singapore photographer. She's the winner of the best portfolio in the last editions of SIPF. Coming through very competitive portfolios, the international portfolio reviewers chose the work for Liu Ying as one that is crafted with a sense of humor and one that is also reviewed in a visual, in, narrate in a visual in a, in a very creative research on the peculiar human habits within a domestic realm. In this edition, Liu Ying presented her solo exhibition, It Can Be Better, at 37 Emerald Hill, a heritage conservation school building. Well, Liu Ying graduated from the School of Arts Design Media in Nanyang Technological University with a Bachelor of Fine Art in Photography and Digital Imaging. Her work has been exhibited at first draft Woman in Film and Photography, Ping Yao International Photography Festival, as well in the Apprentice Program with the Noise Singapore. She believed that photography can and should evoke retro introspections in both the photographer and viewer, fueled by her keen study on, on keen study of the human conditions. She uses photography to contemplate the sights and stories around her. And now I invite Liu Ying to share her works with us. Liu Ying, please. And I, I was thinking about it and I realized that there's a lot of conflict with my mom in my growing up years because there's always this, um, she was always not happy with the way I kept the house clean. You know, she's like, you know, you need to do it better. You know, it should be this, it should be that. And then um, when I went down this train of thought, I was reminded of this um, old documentary project that I did years before and I was actually looking at kitchen skits. So I was photographing people's kitchens as I believe that a kitchen space can tell a family story and a family household habits. Mm. And then and I took a photo of my kitchen and I didn't realize that it actually looked peculiar because it was this um, photo of my stove and it had layers of paper covering it and then pots and pans on the paper itself. And then, you know, because it's habits that I grew up being so accustomed to, but when I actually share it with people, they'll be like, wow, that's, that's not normal. <laughs> Why is it like that? You know, and even when I have to use the spaces that my mom really with much efforts to keep it clean, and it, it frustrated me a lot because I had to take a lot of extra steps to do things that are essential. So when I was looking at these habits, I decided to take these little like stories and frustrations and I exaggerate it into something that was really, you know, people who look at the photos, they'll either be humored by it or they will share with me their stories of like, you know, oh, my mom does this, so, oh, my dad will do this, or, you know, it's crazy. And there are little stories here and there that connect me and the viewers or just friends and people that I talk to, which I'm very appreciative of. Yeah, so um, 
Yeah, and then showing the works here at this space, I think because of how um, old and full of heritage and culture this space is, it's a bit different from exhibiting in a white box space. Yeah, and I'm very grateful that this happened. Yeah, so back to Gwen. Thank you. Thank you, Liu Ying, for sharing all your work. I'm I also very intrigued, you know, when I start on a this walk through your exhibitions and I'm looking at the details within each photograph and I noticed that even the flowers in uh, that is uh, displayed in the vase is also covered with the plastic. Yeah, i just curious like for you as a photographer and uh, making this exhibition like you mentioned earlier on, it's not made within a white cube space. Mm. What well, are uh, and, and of course, we understand in the white cube space, you have like a very controlled space. But in this case, uh, you are utilizing this old um, conservation building. So perhaps you could share with us, you know, with the viewer, with the listener here, what are the challenges and what also uh, could be the advantage working with a space like this? Okay, so I think because of this, if I'm not wrong, this room used to be the principal's office. Yeah, the principal office and it has um, structures in place that clearly indicate where the entrance, where the exit, and there's a lot of windows for natural light to stream in. So I think the advantage that it gave me was that it invoked this homey feeling rather than a very clinical white exhibition space. But because it is a homely feeling, it's firstly off like you know just the basic logistics. I think like um, navigating how much wall space to have or wall space that can be utilized is challenging. And I also had this whole like debate with myself of like, mm. what should I show as prints? What should I show as installation? Because I wanted it to feel homely, but I also wanted it to be a bit abstract so that people will understand that they are actually looking at works, like looking at the kind of like an elevated presentation of thoughts or okay? yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, you actually mentioned how you are looking at installation coming in interactions or with the space within. I'm also curious, how do you establish this uh, relationship between the installation of objects such as the armchair with these layers of towers or even the setup of uh, this colorful plastic bag that is right at the back of this room? Yeah, so what are the considerations when it comes to say, uh, objects within a space as interactions with the prints on the wall? I think when there are objects there itself, right, it can be either very realistic or very sculptural in a sense. So I was having a bit of difficulty in deciding on like what should be prints that are more abstract and what should mm -hmm. be actual things. So even like, you know, utilizing the space here, for example, the, clo the clothes pack that were put at the window still, like, if you really look at the photos, they are actually not supposed to be at the window still, but I felt that it was little details that could, you know, improve or rather like sort of little surprises for viewers when they exhibit, you know, when they walk around the exhibitions and it's more of like, I hope that they are able to discover little things and little quotes around. And it's, it's also similar to my whole journey of creating the works because there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of people will come up to me and tell me about, oh, you can do that or you should do this, you know, but I think when you're really the person doing it, there's a lot of considerations that people wouldn't realize that you're, you went through that. So even like the whole issue of like choosing what pack, I went through so many Daisos, so many Uting Tian, so many NTCs just to find that exact pack. You know, and it was, I was saying because my fiance And those exact pack, pack are the ones them at home. Okay. <laughs> because they were really like out oh, of production. So there's yeah. just like, you know, little things. And I hope that if I include the little things in the exhibitions, like the table installation here, or even the sensation of like people sitting down on the chair, the tower chair, but so far I don't see anyone sitting down on the chair. You know, it's like little things that I hope that they can take away. So it's something that also almost parallel with what I went through in my whole process now. Yeah. Wow. And I and I do like for for people who have visited uh, the exhibition, you might actually also notice that the nature of this space sort of a uh, carve out into different segments like uh, what doing has shared earlier on. Uh, there's this room that could be the former pantry or kitchen and also uh, use, and, uh, a space that used to be the toilet or corset or cupboards or storeroom. 
and all these are put into use into it can be better showcase. I, you know, when you mentioned about how every details that comes together to make this work, it also brings to mind that, um, you know, because for me, uh, I have seen your work previously on exhibits and um, I also realized that some things are not quite the same too. And, um, and I also remember that in our first conversation last year, how to, uh, you know, plan and to conceptualize this show. And of course now in this 2020, the world has changed. The world we know has changed. So I just curious, like uh, perhaps you could share with our listener here, how has the situations or perhaps the, uh, what have transpired since then till now and whether your original intention has retained or felt something between shifted or maybe new works are also added into this uh, showcase? Mm, I would say because of, you know, the whole pandemic situation, a lot of us, we are forced to stay indoors. And this series of work is already very introspective, but I had to be even, I guess I suddenly was just struck by inspiration to be even more introspective. So there was actually a branch of this work that I was um, talking about, um, removing dust, you know, because removing dust is such an essential and like, it's one of the muscle things if you are very obsessed with cleanliness or even just being aware of cleanliness. So initially I had like, like macro photos of dust corners but I just felt that it wasn't really sitting right. And then suddenly, because of the pandemic, I had to be at home, my dad had to be at home. And then suddenly we, I had this inspiration because he was starting to decluttering the space. And mm. I had inspiration of what if I actually use tape to go and collect dust like patterns around the house. So I did that and I realized that every room has like different color of dust. You know, it's insane that I'm talking about something like that, but it's, it's things like, it's very detailed, so it's like... Different color of dust. Yes, so for example, the dust in my room, there's a magenta tint to it because I have a red carpet. And meanwhile, in my brother's room, there's a bit of like blue hair because there's, he has a blue rug, but he threw away the rug. So, and there's also like, for example, when I collected dust at like, mm. for example, at Kiyoshi's place, he rides a bicycle like a lot and he maintains his bicycle, so there's like, how to say, a bit of like iron rust dust around. Yeah, it's quite funny, I guess when I was collecting dust, we still don't know what my parents were like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, Would they get disturbed, like, because pandemic, <laughs> cleanliness is so important, and yet you're collecting dust? I think, no, I think they were just, they were just like, I, they were just too distracted by the pandemic, honestly. <laughs> yeah, 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 they were so in tune with, with like, you know, what's happening in the world, and mm. so, I mean, it can be, it can be unhealthy, la, but I guess I had something to distract me. True. <laughs> yeah. And now that you mentioned about the dust and um, in the end, uh, I was actually quite surprised at how you actually printed it out, mm -hmm. photographed and printed it out and placed it actually almost like an object onto the flux marble table yeah. that is sitting in another room from where we are right now. And uh, have you had, had the, anyone actually approach you to ask what is what are these uh, images? Are there because mm. it's it's so abstract, right? Do you think <laughs> <laughs> so far no? But I would say when I collected the dust off and then I showed like for example my dad or I showed my fiance, they're all like whoa because they didn't realize <laughs> the amount of dust around in the house. Yeah, but meanwhile I think when people come into the space, it's, it's I see them looking at it, but they don't ask. So I don't know if it's because they don't realize that I'm like a stall from like they just look like this crazy person. <laughs> they just like they don't they'll, they'll take mental notes and then they will slowly move along. Yeah, but I do see them looking at it. Yeah. You know, when you mentioned about this uh, obsessiveness with uh cleanliness and uh perfectionist, um, you know, and upon re-looking at your work, I see that each of your work are very well constructed. It's uh, every positionings of the furniture in your setup within the, whether it's the dining room or the, or even the curtains that is just next to this vase of flower. It is actually very well arranged, mm -hmm. very meticulous. So uh, I'm curious, 
Would you think that this uh, habits uh, within your home has also kind of grown into you? <laughs> yeah, because you know it's something that I grew up with, and I didn't realize like how say how clean I am, but rather like how aware I am of it until I start to like you know interact with other people and work in a house or like you know realize that like I realized I was I still remember when I see some of my friends you know like parents being very chill and like their mom being like. Or very chill legs and I was like wow because my mom would never be like that she will always be obsessive sleep cleaning she can only relax when every, every chore is done or she will be relaxing and then like talking about how much chores there are to be done <laughs> okay, like, oh my God. and then I was so I was like wow okay there's actually a lot of like different worlds that you know I didn't I mean I wouldn't have the chance to experience yeah so I think it's like by doing this um I would say it made me aware, but of course at the start, like my sense of aesthetics and how it's going to be arranged wasn't so fine tuned. So I have to thank Song Yen for that because he was actually pushing, nudging me in the right direction. He knew what I wanted to say, but he was just like, no lah, the boss cannot lah, you need to go and buy only specific one. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, and he helped like kick me into the right direction and me like being more aware of things. Yeah, because I think a lot of mm like habits that photograph are mm. very ingrained in us. Mm. So I think to be able to present it, you really need to be very aware. Yeah. 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 And also yeah. make it you know, you need to construct it but still make it re- reliable, relatable, which is quite a challenge. Yeah. yeah. And talking about that, if uh if uh, viewers have the chance uh, or our listener here have a chance to visit the exhibition, um on a closer inspection uh, there's this details even to the clock uh, in at the dining table is exactly placed at this seven o'clock yeah. <laughs> which is the dining time right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and if one is not careful perhaps they may miss out this very well execution slide details that was placed even to the positioning of the chairs that is actually spaced out equally yeah. from one <laughs> another and I would say gosh how long does it take to actually execute and to make one good work? No, it took me a lot of months. And you know, even like when I expanded the work, it took me, I would say, one year of being apart from, you know, at least one to two years being apart from. Because mm. I was so in it, I was a bit, when you're so into something, sometimes you cannot see the big picture. So when I took a, a little break from it, and then because of the previous exhibition, yeah. I had the chance to turn it into a book. Mm. And then I could flesh out the process because the process was the one that was such a headache, but it also was the one that so many people who came up to me, oh my god, that's crazy. Oh, oh sorry, <laughs> but why don't you do that? You know, do this and yeah, it was something that I wanted to present because I felt that it was a large part of the work. Mm. Yeah, so and I remember there's this uh right tuck in one corner of the exhibition is this instructional yes, correct. Uh, <laughs> uh graphics and um and I, in my heart, I was thinking, I don't have the patience to really go through all the instructions. It's worse than uh, COVID-19 instructions. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder, all these instructions, I know that you have many more of this instruction, but only just one is being exhibited here. Um, how, how does this instructions all come about? Okay, so when I was making the book, I had this idea of like, what if, you know, this series I was talking mm. about the frustration of me being the one instructed. So what if I switch it around and I become the one who's instructing people? Yeah, so initially I was thinking of actually presenting the the actual object which was bags in plastic bags. <laughs> That's what my mom do. <laughs> like I would see her open the door and I'd come through the door and then she's carrying like like a lot of bags and it's actually all really bags in plastic bags. I was like, why? <laughs> you know, you're already having bags. And then I created a photo of that and then my instructional manual was instructing someone on how to create the perfect bag in a plastic bag, you know, how to make it neat, how to make it look good. Mm. Yeah, so initially I was thinking, what if I put the object here, or I think I decided against that because I felt that if I put the instructions, it would even drive through the idea of being very, mm. you know, very obsessive even more as compared to the actual object here. Mm. Yeah. And um, am I correct to say that the staging of all this uh, photograph are made at your own home? Actually, no. <laughs> no? It was actually at my fiancé's place because um, his house has this charm of 
he stays at Hougang, so the estate itself is already quite old, and his house has not been majorly renovated for, I think, close to 30 years. Yeah, so it has a certain kind of unified look that I was going after. Because previously, when I was creating the works, I was going to a lot of different toilets <laughs> for different like, living rooms, and I just felt that it couldn't really tie in. But at yeah. his place, it was spacious enough, and he had a, a unified motive, you know, the towel going through the kitchen. Mm. Especially so, the one that is above you. Yeah, yeah, so it was something that I felt that it was just, you know, really just while the universe just aligned everything, and oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, he was very, he was very kind. His dad was very kind because his dad didn't really mind me doing a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. He even helped me, like, you know, do some of the chores because I was drowning in the amount of video work that I had to do to yeah. change the photo. But yeah. now, now that you have revealed that this are. Uh, these are constructed at your fiancé's place. What do you think would be your pe- your mom's uh, reaction if she to see what you're doing here with this layers and layers? I think she understands that I'm doing some work, but she I don't really have the heart to tell her that I'm inspired by her. Yeah, but she was saying like, oh yeah, my father is also very, very good. She's like, okay. Yeah, but I have to say my dad is not exactly your friend of because. <laughs> I think my dad is more old school, so he would prefer like if he see me taking like documentary, like the old, like very mm. straight documentary work, he would be a fan of it. But he looked at me and like, why do you need to arrange the clothes? So he's like, just for some more, <laughs> you know what is this for? Now like, uh, yeah. for art. <laughs> you know, yeah. and sometimes it's very like hard to explain, not just for art at all. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's very interesting when we talk about photography, we talk of, about photographing what is uh, before in front of the lens. But at the same time, actually, photography is all about uh, imagination within a space. Mm-hmm. And, um, and right here, when I think when we first uh, take on a site visit to this blog, mm-hmm. and we are actually already exercising our imagination, mm-hmm. right? in looking at how um, people would encounter yeah. and just like how in in the case of your work how you'll be imagining you know by creating this how will people react and uh, response to this idea of professionalism of being a professionist to the very extreme case uh, in a domain realm yeah I, and talking about that domestic space <laughs> i i also wonder you know now because of the covid people are are being sort of like placed in a situation you have to follow instruction from a to z yeah. <laughs> and and um uh, and all of a sudden there are more idea there are more uh, regulation and uh put in place that has to be carried out in public as well in private space so i just curious like how, how this containment, which is very much of your work, this containment here, how, how do you think like, this work says about our life right now? Mm, I think it's probably definitely not normal. <laughs> yeah, like we are not living in around, normal time. Going around the, the space is like new normal, like boom, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. What is new normal, right? Yeah. So I think it's of course it's something that we are not used to, and you know even though I would say like I grew up with so much like to do, but I'm also still not very used to. You know sometimes I would head out of my house and rest, or I wear a mask and head back. You know, so I think it's something that a lot of rules and re- a lot of things that bubble on the surface we need to probably get some time to get accustomed to it. You know, and whether it's for the good or bad, for good or worse, I. I don't think I'll be able to have a good say on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but definitely I'm really hoping for things to be at least halfway, like half fifty percent alike to the old normal. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, Liuing, when you mentioned how your dad uh, would actually better appreciate straight documentary yes. works, right? <laughs> and now I think about it, your you being a full time photographer. Being, you being a full-time photographer is very much about uh, responding to uh, situations and taking this documentary of people and and these are all situation and event not within your control but then on the very extreme end here you're looking at your 
uh, personal arts practices and this is uh, again having this uh, I would say uh, this freedom to construct. I, I guess that the mode of thinking and the mode of processes is also very different. Yeah, I would say sometimes I feel almost a bit like well, it's a bit hard to balance like two different head cases. So like because I'm a freelance photographer and people hire me to create on the spot, document whatever that's happening. Whereas when I come to my own art practice, I think because I have the luxury of controlling things, so I'll really just be talking. <laughs> and I think I I like your part on <laughs> indulging on it. Yeah, and I, I think I actually respond better to having control. Yes. So that they get away like a nice person. But I think I appreciate things that I can kind of create. Mm. But of course, sometimes I keep reminding myself that there's also beauty in discovering like surprises along the way, okay. as long as I survive the hard checks. <laughs> yeah. Well, for listeners who are tuning in live right now to us, most of you are hearing sound. And I have to say that we are actually right now even welcoming uh, visitors to the exhibition sites at 37 Emerald Hill. Well, just one last question. You know, um, with regards uh, before we we talked before Louis will take us on a sneak peek on the exhibition here at uh, at Emerald Hill. Um, have your parents or family members visited this exhibition, and what are their reactions to to your work? Uh, okay, so I haven't had my family members down to the exhibition yet, but. My mom, when she saw the photo, she always comment. She really will comment that it's, it's very neat, it's very tidy. But my dad will be like, oh, "What are you doing? There's no one to stand in this piece." <laughs> then, like, um, for example, my brother, they would see and my my sister-in-law would just be like, "Wow, it's really." They could understand the message, lah. So I think, and how about your fiance? I think it's the whole project is really burnt to his mind because we're <laughs> like, making work at his place. So he he will come in here like. Oh, this feels like my house, you know, just a chair is from him and the table is from I loan from him, no thank you. Yeah, and he really he will be like, so weird because these are photos of my house, but they're not exactly my house. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there's a, a lot of manipulation to whatever that's captured in the frame. Now, so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Do you think that, um, are you ready to bring uh, the our listener online now on a sneak peek? Sure, sure. Of, of your exhibitions. Okay, so I will... And uh, what I will be doing here, I will mute my my com, and so Liu Ying will be actually on hers. Space. So this print behind me, my infamous toilet paper print. Yeah, I decided to use it as I felt that this space would resemble a toilet and the sink would fit very well. And actually the print is a bit lower. I was even suggested to put the print even lower to mimic this whole like hand washing sink um, feeling. But I, I raised it a bit higher lah, so it's easy for viewing. So this is, yeah, and I think my favourite detail would be the packs. So, yeah. The packs tie into one of my prints, and then I have some smaller prints on another wall. So cleaning tools, and I have tags comparing how effective the tools are. Yeah, so this is my space, and should I show them more? Or do you think it's sufficient? Maybe we can take a look at the, uh, the last room. Okay, so one of these like really cool feature of this room is this closet space. Yeah, so I think it's probably like kind of like a storeroom for the principal or something like that. And if you guys can see, I have a whew, okay a decal on the wall, which is actually a print of the closet space. And I felt that this would be really um, suitable for the print because it's like a hidden closet space. And I installed some of the actual thirsty hippos and hangers to mimic this feeling of um, being in a closet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so here we are uh, at like the exhibitions here. 
thank you for the lovely conversation with Liu Ying. Yes. Okay. And um, I wish that uh, if given uh, in a normal condition, conditions, uh, you could be with us right at uh, 37 Emerald Hill in Singapore. So I hope that uh, this has been a lovely session um, to hear from the artist on her process and her practices and what occupy her construct what occupy her mind when it comes to presenting her work in a physical space such as this. And um, if you are interested to hear more from our artists, which are exhibiting in the festival, do join us again on Wednesday, 5 p.m. And we will be actually having a conversation with Thomas Sabin and Joan. And, uh, and do let us know what do you think about our online program and uh, check out for more information on the festival website, www.sipf.sg. Thank you. Thank you. Have a very good day.